What's going on guys? John Alder here from Codemy.com and in this video, we're going to add a cart total to our e-commerce app with Django and Python. Alright guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to add a cart total to our app. But before we get started, if you like this video, want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with thousands of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off lifetime memberships to all my courses, videos, and books, runtime fee, which is insanely cheap. Okay, like I said, in this video, we're going to add a shopping cart total. So we have this setup to where we have all the items in our shopping cart summary page. Now we want to put at the bottom a little total that adds up everything in our cart. So we've got three of these books at $19.99. So we would take $19.99 times three plus $9.98 times five, add those up, put a little total at the bottom of the screen so the user knows what their running total is in their shopping cart at the moment. So let's head over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor in the Git Bash Terminal as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other videos in this Django e-commerce series. So check that out if you haven't so far. So I'm in my cart underscore summary dot HTML page. And let's just come down here towards the bottom. And let's see, here's, there's nothing in our cart. So after this end four, let's put, let's put a strong tag close that tag and then say total. And then let's go ahead and save this and head back over here and hit reload just to make sure we're in the right spot. And here that says total. Eh, okay, maybe that's a little bit wonky. Maybe we'll take this guy out. Maybe we will instead of making this strong, let's go like h3. It's a headline three tag. And after this, let's put some line breaks. Just to balance this out a little bit. And back here, hit reload. Okay, now it says total there. Big, nice big letters. That looks good. We got some space. Okay, so now let's delete some items. And when we do, that total disappears because we put it inside the loop. So, all right, that looks good. Now let's come back here and add that to cart. And we'll just do one for now. Now, every time this page loads, we want to get a running total of whatever's in the cart and just put it up on the screen. Now, whenever we update or remove, the page gets reloaded automatically. So every time this page loads, that's when we want this addition or subtraction or whatever, this math to take place. So let's head over to our views.py file and let's look in our cart summary page. Let's call this totals and let's set this equal to cart.total. We've got this totals. Let's pass it to the page itself. So in our context dictionary, we can put totals, colon totals. So, all right, that looks good. Now this total function, we don't actually have. So let's save this and go to our main cart page, cart.py. And inside of here, oh, anywhere really, let's, let's define a total and we wanna pass it in itself. So let's grab our cart and let's call this quantities. You could call this anything we want. We could call it stuff if we wanted to, but uh, this is going to be self.cart. Now, remember, this is going to return basically our cart is a dictionary with the product ID and the quantity, right? So if there's two things in the cart, maybe it's book number two, which is intro to T Kinter programming, and maybe we have five of those in our cart. So this is what our cart is going to look like. So we need to loop through here, grab each of these quantities, and look them up in our products. So we need our products. So let's go uh, get product IDs. So let's call this product underscore IDs. So we already know how to do this. Let's go, uh, let me move this up a little. Let's go self dot cart dot keys. So we just want the keys, right? Now we want to look up those keys. Oops, misspelled self. Now we want to look up those keys. Look up those keys in our products database model, right? So let's go products. And this is going to equal product.objects.filter. And we want to filter by ID underscore underscore in whatever that product IDs is, which is what we just defined here. So we're getting all of the product IDs in our cart. So for instance, this guy and this guy, and then we're taking those and looking them up in the product model, right? So be sure up here at the top, you've imported from store.models product. We did this in an earlier video, so it should already be there. Uh, let me comment, uh, get quantities. 
We've got our products and we've got the quantities. So now let's create a running total. I'm just gonna call this total. Now we've called this totals. So let's change this to cart underscore total and head back to our views.py file. And this is gonna be cart underscore total, just so there's no uh, ambiguity there. And let's set this equal to zero. So let's start counting at zero. So now we just need to loop through the items in our cart and sort of add everything up. So let's go for key and value in quantities dot items. And this is how we loop through that. And here, let's change this key. We'll set this equal to the int of key because we wanna make sure the, the product is passed as a string. Remember, uh, well, we deleted our little dictionary thing here, but the first thing in the key value pair is a string. So we need to convert that into an integer because we're gonna be doing math now, right? Let's say convert key string into int so we can do math, right? So now let's loop through our products. Let's go for product in products. Remember products is just all of our products that we've searched by product ID. Now inside of here, let's do some logic. Let's say if the product dot ID equals our key, right? Which is now an integer. And this product ID, we'll look at that in just a second. Then what do we wanna do? Well, we wanna take our total and we wanna set that equal to total plus, what do we wanna do? We wanna go product dot price times whatever value is. And this value is the key value pair. Remember, we've got basically a four and a three and a, you know, a two and a four, whatever. This is the product ID. This is the number, the quantity of them. So this value is this number. So we're multiplying by that number. This product.price and also the product.id where are we getting those? Remember our models.py file in our store directory here has the price and they all have an ID, right? So we can call product.price and product.id to get those items right out of our product model. So, okay, that looks good. So now once we get all of this stuff, we just want to return the total. So now if we go back over to our views.py file, remember we are passing that totals into our context dictionary as totals. So we can access this on our page. So let's go back to our cart summary page and come down here to our total here. And we can, let's put a dollar sign and then let's just pass in that totals. So now if we save this and head back over here, uh, let's add some more items. Let's add just one of these just to make sure. And we come back over here, it says 998. If we change this to two and update it, it's 1996. All right, that looks good. Now there's one more wrinkle. If we go back to our homepage, remember some of these things are on sale. So if we view this guy and add it to the cart and come back over here and let's remove these, we see 1198, right? It's not doing the sale price. So we need to make sure if there is a sale, we need to do the sale price. So if we come back over here and we look in our store models.py file and look at our products section here, we have first, is there a sale? And this is a Boolean, true or false. So we can say, if is sale, right? Then we can do some logic. And then if it is, we wanna use the sale price. Otherwise we wanna use the regular price. So in our cart.py, let's come down here and let's see, inside of here, let's do another if loop. Let's go if product dot is underscore sale. Then, well, let's put this over here. Instead of product.price, it's product.sale underscore price. And we can copy this. Else, if it's not true, it means it's not on sale. So we want just the regular price. All right, so go ahead and save this. Head back over here and let's hit reload here. And boom, we get 699. Uh, we change this to one, uh, change it to two. All right, 1398. Let's try and add another one just to make sure. Uh, let's go 998, add to cart. So we have 998 plus 699 times two. Let's pull up a calculator and just make sure that is working right. So 
99 times 2 is 1398 plus 998. 2396, boom, there we go. So if we change this to 2, update it, 3394, and that looks good. That's how to get our running totals. Not too hard, a little bit of math, a little bit of logic, and that's all there is to it. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and be sure to check out codeb.com. We could use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off lifetime membership. So that's access to all my courses, over 60 courses, thousands of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 180,000 students learn to code just like you. My name is John Alder from codeb.com, and I'll see you in the next video.